Welcome to the video. This is my first flight of the uh, Femi Xiaomi A3 drone and it took me a few minutes to get it off the ground because I had to see it and basically when you first get it and you first set it up you've got to make sure it can get enough um, satellites. Now it's not going to take off with less than 12 satellites and it will get somewhere between 9 and 7 when you first turn it on. After 10 or 15 minutes, it's going to end up with about 15 to 17 satellites that you'll be fine to take off. There's me waving at the camera. Yeah, I've got a very bald head, haven't I? My son's going crazy there. Um, the, as you can see, the auto level on the camera itself is really quite disturbing. It flicks and flats a little bit, so be careful of the lighting conditions. This is a worst case scenario for the lighting conditions. This is a very bright, very hazy, very moist day and there's not really much the camera can do. It's auto coloration is suffering a little. I've tried to use an auto level to, to, to play it down, but realistically, there's nothing you can do of it. It's good for stationary shots. It's good for very slow tracking shots. Don't expect to do dolly moves with this thing right off the bat. Also, I kind of, I left, I was playing, trying to pull the camera up and down. I think I was pushing the levels up and down as well. As you can see there, the grass has practically gone blue. Um, that's also probably due to the auto coloration. You probably can't see this the same way I can, but I'm going to turn that off. But this drone is fast. Now, this is in GPS mode. It's not in sport mode. I didn't fly it in sport mode. It seems to do something around 15, 20 miles an hour um, easily while in this mode. Um, this field is very large. It's a recreation ground. It's far enough away from houses to fly this thing, and it could cross it in about 20 or 30 seconds. Um, in sport mode it could probably do a lot faster. I was never in any danger of it hitting the floor. I was never in any danger of anything else. I felt confident enough to hand it to my seven-year-old son to see what he could do with it. Obviously he's being supervised. I'm showing him how to operate the camera there. And I'd say confidence-wise this drone, first thing my son did by the way, was find the closest tree and fly it straight for it. Watch. It's kind of fun. You don't see that but he's found the closest tree and we he goes, there we go, there, where's the closest tree? I'll find the closest tree, here we go. There we go, uh, he wants it lower down. I tell him no to take it back up, and that is full pell, and that is like literally six or seven feet away from a tree. <laughs> the detail, this, I, the only thing I did do with the video is I set it on the 60 megabits per second, so this video, I'm gonna try and upload it as higher rating in 1080p as YouTube will allow me. I won't be able to send it up raw. It will go down to 20 megabits a second going to YouTube, but the quality was absolutely phenomenal. At the 60 megabits per second, it picks up pretty much all the detail a 1080p camera can. It appears to be fairly lossless in terms of color coordination. And this is just it traveling at 30 meters across the park. As you can see, that's easily 20 or 30 miles an hour. And within 20 seconds, it's got to the other side of the park which is about the size of a decent sized cricket pitch, um, certainly longer than a football pitch. As you can see there's a marking for a half a football pitch there, uh, for a football pitch there, and I'm on the other side of it, and this is going lengthways across the football pitch. <laughs> I'm just messing around with the controls. As you can see, that's reasonably quick. The whole thing's very, very, very smooth, very quick. It makes very little noise. I would say that it sounds somewhere between a, a, a chirping and a hairdryer. It chirps and sounds like a hairdryer. It's not a very loud drone. If you're flying at this height, you can barely hear it. So you know where it is because you can hear the buzzing, but it sounds like an angry bee in the distance, not even, not even a bee really. So the reflection of the sunlight off of the grass really is doing, playing a number with the camera's levels here. As the sunlight's reflecting directly off of very dry grass on a day where it was 30 degrees centigrade. But as you can see, it takes very confident, very good video. 
I'm very impressed with the drone. Um, there'll be more footage of it. There's also going to be a review of me opening it, which is going to go alongside this video. And I hope to have that finished fairly soon. Please bear with me. This is a new channel. I've moved all my technical stuff off of my gaming channel. And the reason I've done that is basically that I realized I was pushing people away. So every time I make a technical video, I'm pushing the gamers away. And every time I'm making a gaming video, I'm pushing the technical people away. So I've divide, decided to divide my efforts. There's going to be more. All my technical videos are going to go here. All my cooking videos are going to Bad Food Blog. And all my gaming videos are going to The General Crow. So, The Hacker That Sold The Earth is my technical channel. Bad Food Blog is where I review bad foods, make bad foods, unbox junky foods, make ramen noodles, that kind of thing. And The General Crow is my gaming channel where I play Fortnite with my son, Minecraft with my son, and we occasionally, and you know, review a Final Fantasy game or something like that. At the moment I'm playing Final Fantasy XV, but you don't want to hear about that, you're here for the drone. Now, the flight time I got out of this was about 9 minutes. Now, I had charged the battery when I first got it, and I had used the drone for about 5 or 6 minutes before it started, so I'd say I got a good 16-17 minutes out of the battery. And when I landed the drone, it had just told me that the battery was red, but red appears to be somewhere around 23%. So I believe it tells you that the battery has expired, it's enough chance for you to get the drone back from this distance. I had not changed the ceiling, I had not altered any of the beginner stuff or anything. So the drone was pretty capable of doing anything it wanted. I really enjoyed using this, it's going to be fun using it in the future. Thanks for watching, I'm going to leave you with this eerie spacey background music and I'm going to go off and play a video game. Thanks for watching. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the rest of the video. I, I do show the follow me function, but I didn't send to myself, so god damn, the footage looks awful. But yeah, I mean, just for just a playing around and not trying to do any serious filming, the quality of these pictures, the gimbal stabilization is incredible. Oh, by the way, the wind on this day was somewhere between 10 and t gusts up to 20 miles an hour. Um, at this point during the day, the gusts are around 10 to 15, but you can tell by the top of the trees, it's very, very still. Obviously with a warm day, the wind gets more and more in the afternoon. But there's a little bit of wind, and as you can see, absolutely no effect. Oh, this I take it up to 59 meters. I daren't take it any higher because although you can't see it in this footage, there's actually a police helicopter above me at this point, which was buzzing around. And I know the floor, you know, the ceiling is 120 meters, but with a police helicopter hovering around 150, I didn't really want to give it an opportunity to bitch at me. So I kept it, you know, uh, 50 meters high. There's a uh, nice part of Essex there. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.